Recently I had a conversation with an American guy online, he's based in Nicaragua, he's an IT expert, and the topic of working or setting up a business in a developing country when you've come from a Western country was raised. And he took a firm position that it's never okay for a Westerner to come to a developing country and set up a business or take a job opportunity because it, that could be potentially depriving a local of that opportunity. And it got me really thinking about that perspective and the first thing that I came to realize was that even though people are moving from the West for largely similar motivations to developing countries, that there's very distinct and different categories that they fall into and depending on which category they're in will likely define how they feel about issues relating to running businesses or taking job opportunities. And then it got me thinking about our situation, for example, expat, someone that lives in another place, possibly or maybe for a business or work opportunity, but their intention is to ultimately go back to the place from where they've came. You've got retirees, well we're not retirees. You've got foreign investors, that's not us. You've got plan B's who are people who have come for a prescribed period of time to get their residence, set up a, a property, but they're gonna use it as a plan B. That's not us. You've got refugees, and even though we left our place of former residence uh, for reasons that I won't go into now, we don't technically fit into the category of being refugees. So after rinsing this through, I came to the conclusion that actually the, the category that best suits our circumstances is we're, we're migrants. We've migrated to this country. And the difference, I think, between that category and all of the rest is that we don't intend to leave. This is now plan B. This is where we're going to live for the as long as we can and hopefully forever. And if it's not here, it will be somewhere else, but it won't be the place from where we came unless we have no other options. So this is not a plan B. So then I was thinking about the position that my friend took there. And I was thinking about someone I actually know here in Paraguay who does really well online, has several forms of income online and has no reason to really pursue any any other forms of income in terms of their living situation but nonetheless they've decided to set up a business in Paraguay and they're in the process of doing that at the moment it's very instructive to consider where they're at with that because it really perhaps gives an insight into that perspective that my friend had that I spoke about initially. And to explain, my friend's rationale for setting up this business is even though they're making really good forms of income online, there's no reason to expect that that will always be the case. And there's several good reasons why you should be cautious about totally relying on that way of making your money. And this person, I won't go into details, but they're clever. They, they have an insight into such things and in their view it's very prudent for them to have something going locally just to hedge their bets. But more broadly when I think about our own situation apart from making sure that we have the ability to make money locally which I think is really essential because you've got your money in the country as opposed to trying to reef it out of a bank or flying or whatever. The other real big advantage of having a local business or even taking a job locally is that you're working with the locals, you're speaking their language, you're becoming embedded in the culture, you're really becoming part of the country. And I don't think that you can do that if you're sitting in your office, in your condo, making your money online. It's just, there's no substitute for rolling up your sleeves and getting in the ditches with the people of the country that you now consider to be home. So I think that working or having a business in the place where you live is really essential for us. And we're already in the process of going down that track and we'll talk about it more in future videos. But addressing the question of whether that's good for this country, I think about the places that I've lived in before and regardless of who it was that came to that country from what what, what region there's there's no, no situation i can think of where bringing in skills and attitudes work ethics can't it, it can only be a positive thing and it doesn't matter whether 
they came from a less developed country or a more developed country. I think that as long as it's done sensitively and people are reasonable and they think about others, bringing in whatever you've got to another country and working in a way that you have their best interest at heart and you have your country's best interest at heart, how can that be a bad thing? And you're going to bring in your skills, your qualifications, your knowledge, whatever it is, and there's many areas in this country that could really benefit from people coming in and bringing those perspectives, just like every other country. And I say that bar none, whether you are coming from the US, Europe, Australia, wherever it is, all of those countries have benefited significantly from people moving there as migrants, rolling up their sleeves, looking for the opportunities, seeing what they could bring. And if it was nothing else except their work ethic or if it was their, their great attitude or whatever it was, they contributed something that added to that country and that, that allowed them to get on with being fruitful, productive citizens. The good thing is that when you move to a place like Paraguay, is if you're not doing the right thing, you're not gonna last. It's not like you're gonna be able to come here and park up and jump on the unemployment benefit. You're not going to be able to just become a, a sponge for everything that you can get. You either do your share or you don't get fed. So I think that's a really good counterbalance and a reason to be optimistic that when people do come here and set up a business or seek job opportunities that they'll do it in the right way and ultimately I can't see how that can't be of benefit to the country. I think that there's a danger when we get into this scarcity mindset that there's only a finite number of jobs or there's only a finite number of businesses that can operate in that particular sector. That is rubbish. Hey, that's my opinion on the hot button topic. Ultimately, I don't think my friend in Nicaragua needs to overly worry. And the reason why I say that is because South Americans in general, definitely Paraguayans are just too smart, they're resourceful, they're intelligent, educated, and they have too much going that would allow a situation for someone to come in and dominate any particular sector. They'll just watch what you're doing. If they like it, they'll learn it, they'll replicate it, they'll improve upon it, and then they might dominate in it. And who cares? At the end of the day, you've done something good and you've bought something that wasn't here before. And there's many things that can be bought here that would benefit the country, just like any country. And when I look around South America, I think of and see of so many things that they do here that if we had have had more of that exposure in places that I live, like New Zealand or Australia and other places, it would have been to our benefit. So don't worry about it. It's all gonna work out. Just proceed with good intentions and love and all will be fine. I'll be interested to hear what you think. Please leave comments down below. Try to be nice because I'm a sensitive boy. Okay, take care. Ciao.